Hi everyone, Trisha from Fleet Family Support Center here to talk to you about deal number three, the trade-in. So now that you've done your homework, you've negotiated the price of the vehicle, you've negotiated your financing, it's time to start thinking about that trade-in. So let's look at trade-in versus private sales. Private sales are a great way for you to make some extra money, but a couple things to keep in mind. How much time do you have? You'll have to place your ads. You'll have to be available to meet your buyers. Once you've negotiated and settled on a price, now it's time to collect payment from your buyers. If you can get cash, that's the way I would go. If you can't get cash, I would ask to meet them at their bank or your bank to make the deal. This way it can ensure you that they have the funds to pay for your vehicle. Always protect yourself. Now looking at your trade-in, if you're trading it in at a dealership, just keep in mind that the dealer's not going to give you full value for that vehicle because they're going to have to resell it and make some money off of it. How do you know if you're getting a good price for your vehicle? Well, remember when you did your homework earlier and you were looking to see how much your new vehicle was going to cost you or what you should be paying for that new vehicle? It's the same thing. So I want you to go back to those websites, Kelly Blue Book, NADA, check them out. Look up and see how much your vehicle is worth. Just remember, your vehicle is not excellent. So you're going to want to look at the different uh, prices that are available for that vehicle. Um, they can range just depending on what state you're in or what dealership that you're going into, but at least it gives you a general idea of how much it's going to cost you um, to trade in that vehicle or how much you're going to get for that vehicle. Okay, now what if you're trading in a vehicle that's not worth as much money as you still owe? We call this upside down. So when you're trading in your vehicle that you owe more for it than it's actually worth, you want to use caution. First of all, the dealerships are probably going to be pretty happy to make a deal with you because they're selling a vehicle, right? But what happens to the unpaid balance? Well, they're going to take that amount and they're going to add that to the amount of your loan. So now you're getting into a new car with even more negative equity than you would have starting fresh. So here's a couple things to keep in mind. If you are upside down in your car, do you have extra funds that you can pay it down so that you can at least break even or even keep it at a lower balance? If not, maybe you should think about keeping your car just a little bit longer until you've made some more payments on that vehicle and that the trade-in would be a little more even. So those are some of the things you want to consider when looking at trading in your vehicle. Now I hope today that we've given you many of the tools that you're going to need to go out and buy that next vehicle. If you ever have any questions, please contact us at Fleet and Family Support Center. We'll be happy to talk you through it.